Is, and they don't, even though they have um, the title and the, if you like, the status to operate with authority, they don't seem to operate in authority. That's in a natural sense. So if you've got a teacher, obviously a teacher with a class, it can operate in authority um, over the children and control the children and so on, or all the time is being lost, the control is being lost. There, there isn't a release of authority, so the children ride roughshod over the teacher. And that goes in any, any part of a profession or, or a calling. So that's the natural <laughs> stuff. When it comes to having authority, which is given by God, um, that's given in the environment of influence where we are actually been placed and where God wants us to operate with that kind of authority. When it comes to the believer's authority, when we are born again, when we come to know Jesus, he gives us position as sons. Now, obviously, the, in, the, in the Hebrew context, the eldest son is the inheritor. So he gives us position as the inheritance. And then he gives us authority. So uh, Luke 10, 19, I have given you authority. It's a, it's a past tense. It's not something that we're going to attain in the future. It's not futuristic. It's actually past tense. So Jesus has given that authority. When he commissioned his disciples to go out to preach gospel, he said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Therefore you go. And he sent them out to preach with the authority um, in his name, with the authority that we have as believers. And so we were saying, well, number one is that if you don't understand in your being who you are, if you don't understand your identity in Christ and your identity as a person, then you will not carry yourself with this kind of authority. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you're seeing yourself in the right light, you're seeing yourself, as, as it, the Bible says, made in the image of God, you're seeing yourself created by the Heavenly Father, you're seeing yourself knitted together in your mother's womb, you're seeing yourself fearfully and wonderfully made, as it says in Psalm 139, and you're actually then valuing yourself. You know that God can't make anything bad. So when God makes us, he looked and he said, it's good what I've made. Now, of course, we've got the fall and we've got the sin that came into the world, but Jesus dealt with that. And so when we become believers, the sin factor is dealt with, the sin factor is shut down and we're given a brand new nature. Amen? A brand new <coughs> creation we become. So where it comes to living out of this new creation, then we must identify with the right person, with the Lord Jesus Christ. We must identify with the right things. That's why he said, think of that which is good, of a good report. Think of that which is excellent. Think of that which is of a good, um, of, of praise. So if we're all the time feeding ourselves with negativity, whether it's actually overdoses of news, or overdoses of, you know, slander or gossip, whatever it might be, we're feeding ourselves with the wrong diet. We need to be able to feed ourselves with things that actually build us up. Things that release us into this God-given authority. Amen. So where it comes to, um, number one, the identity that we have. So respect yourself. You couldn't have a higher calling as a child of God. You couldn't have a higher calling as an ambassador for Christ. So why don't you start to think and value yourself with that kind of respect and also other believers, valuing them, respecting them with that same kind of respect. Amen? Secondly, where you're looking at authority, you're looking at something that's actually past tense. I have already given you authority. So therefore you're not a beggar and you're not actually, you know, trying to get more authority. The authority you have will grow as you use it, as you get proficient in usage of it.
Amen? Okay, so then, <coughs> if, <coughs> excuse me, in one sense, that's um, a little recap from last week. Now, last week we had a, um, I heard a testimony. There were probably others. I heard one um, short uh, testimony from John. I'd like John to come and to share, because this is, this is revolutionary. Um, and we're going to go into this, uh, this particular topic now. So what do you do with this God-given authority? This is one of the things that you do. This is John. Hi, John. Right, we're talking about authority and God's authority on your life. Well, I've started doing this thing called Stronghold with Pastor Robin. And through part of it, God showed me that I had a big stronghold on my life of rejection. I took God's authority over that. And for me, just that, the act of taking God's authority over it was completely life-changing. Good. And what, how, do you, how have you been since then? I've been, this week? I've been brilliant this week. What difference has that made to you? It's, I found it a lot easier to focus on God and to be still in front of him. And when you were describing last week, you were saying... Some of the stuff that you were doing because of the rejection was actually to please people. Yeah, I was turning into a, you know, a pleaser of man instead of a pleaser of God. So that, that's, a, cause that's a, a very hard wicket to mm. actually be trying to earn approval and acceptance it is. from people. And how are you dealing with that now? Wonderfully. I, I found that I'm not seeking to find you know, approval from people. And I know I don't need their people's approval. And I'm happy being still in front of my father. Good. Amen. God bless you. So we take that to the, um, the second scripture. Oh, I probably need to read that one just to complete it. But I have given you authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions. This is Luke 10, 19. I've given you authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. So Jesus said, I've given you authority. So in this uh, particular scripture, he's saying I've given you authority in a certain, certain realm. I've given you authority over snakes, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. So that means we have authority, you and I have authority over every demon. So the question is really, are you exercising that authority and are you actually then commanding the demonic powers out of your house, out of your health, out of your bank balance, amen? If necessary, out of your marriage. You know how destructive demons are when you're a pastor and you can see the devastation that they cause in certain instances. And, you know, of course it's not all the time demons, but a lot of the time it is. Because we have an enemy, we have an adversary, we have the accuser of the brethren. So you've got to be able to use this God-given authority and you use it by speaking words. You can either speak into your situation life and command the life of God, or you speak death, you speak negativity. If you're grumbling about a situation, you're not changing the situation. Amen? If you're grumbling about a situation, you're not being proactive about that situation. To be proactive about that situation, you start to speak to it. You start to take authority over it. You start to take dominion over it, and you start to rule in that situation. That's the um, authority that God has given to us. I mean, and so it said here, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said, he'll give us power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I think sometimes people, believers, think that they're going to get hurt. The enemy at some point is going to hurt them. At some point he's going to sting them. And at some point he's going to actually 
you know, come into their situation and they fear that. And actually their conversation gives way to that. One of the most amazing conversations, you know, um, I've heard is where people say to me, Pastor, it must be quite tough for you because you're on the front line, frontline services. <laughs> Ben's got a frontline services as a nurse. And uh, so, frontline services. You say you're on the front line. And uh, I say, actually, no, I'm in the perfect will of God, in the best place position that I could be because the ones who get actually picked off are the stragglers. The ones who perhaps presum presumptuously run ahead of God and so on and get out of sync with God. They're the ones who can, get, can possibly get picked off because the Bible says give no place to the give no place to the devil. Okay, so obviously if it says give no place, it means we can give place. If you, if you become bitter, you give place to the demons. Sometimes if you, if you give way to anger, you give, you give place to the devil. And so what we want to do is to keep the enemy out. Amen? So we're going to look at that one, and uh, it's just an awesome subject. I have given you authority. Don't expect to get hurt. <laughs> hey, Bill. Where is he? Well, actually, it's a good question. Where is the devil, folks? <laughs> Under my feet. It's a good, like, if you, take, if you take the theology of the demonic, the devil can only be in one place at one time in one location. He's probably not here because this is a smaller group. You follow me? Anyway, even if he tried to come, he wouldn't be able to stay. The, the, the thing is that he's probably doing something right now in Israel. He's doing big, big things. So, but you see, he has an army. One third of the angels fell. So that's why the Bible says, Satan is under our feet. That's why the most build, the most used part of our feet should be, the most used part of our anatomy should be our feet. He said, you will tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. Amen. Okay, so we release that authority <coughs> that God has given us with our words. That's why you always want to evaluate your words. You always want to check your words. Are you speaking life? Amen. Authority releases... The, releases heaven. We, the church, is truly the gateway of heaven on earth. So when we, when, we, when, we, when we release heaven, people get blessed. Amen. It's awesome, isn't it? You can actually go and release heaven in your workplace. You can release heaven uh, wherever you are planted, in your family life. And you know, you know what the opposite is like, is a war zone. Things, things are going down, sicknesses prevailing, um, and oppressions are prevailing, and so on and so forth. And you take authority and you say, no, enough is enough. And I command you to get out of my situation. You, you, you direct the demonic out. And, and bear in mind, you're not usually speaking actually literally to the devil, but you're speaking to his cohorts. You're speaking to the demons. And when you tell them to go, they go. Whatsoever we bind on earth is already that which has been bound in heaven. Amen. Okay, so coming into the, briefly, into the um, 1 Corinthians 10.4, and we touched on this last week, and this is what John was talking about, and it's what he practiced. Really good to hear people practicing what you preach, practice the Word of God. He said in verse, um, in verse 3, 
For though we walk in the flesh, which we do, we do not war according to the flesh. Amen. Don't get into fleshly interaction with other people who are trying to get the better of you. You'll never win. You know, you, some, people, some people are really smart. I mean, they cut you to pieces with their words. They're just, they're just smart. You know, there's no point in coming down to the level of the flesh. Amen. No, no point. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every higher thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete. This is one of the life-changing scriptures. This is where, um, when I started to address fears in my life, the fears left. I, um, because of my background, being very wild and stuff, and, and being arrested and, you know, having problems in many different directions, I had this fear of policemen. I got some, you know, bad treatment from police. So I had, had this fear. And these, um, th this amazing thing, when I realised I've got it, I start addressing it. And I start rebuking it out of my life. I spent a few months doing that. Not every morning, but a lot of mornings. I, dr I rebuke this, this fear. Because the Bible says we have not received the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So the way to deal with fear, when it's a stronghold in our lives... Because the Bible says oh, the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Then I was addressing a stronghold of fear. And the Bible's got 365 fear knots in it. One for every day of the year except leap year. <laughs> Amen. Fear not, for I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. Amen. Fear not, you are mine. Fear not, I will strengthen you. Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Amen. So when we're addressing these kind of things, and two big burly policemen burst into our church in Wembley, and they said, where's the fire? They were very rude, very aggressive, and, and um, really, I said, there's no fire. They didn't believe me. They pushed into church. They just, like, big bullies. Huge, big bullies. And uh, so I stood my ground and I used my authority. And after I dealt with them and they left, I realized I didn't have any fear of policemen anymore. See how it works? So John talked about stronghold of rejection in his life. Rejection is a very, very horrible spirit. Rejection. When you feel rejected, you don't feel loved doesn't matter. You know, you could have people really, really love you, but you don't feel loved. That's the spirit of rejection. So when you're dealing with this spirit of rejection, and you're addressing it like John was this week, I, I've seen, I meet up with John semi-regularly, because he's the head of the media team. Um, I just looked at him, and, and I thought, man, there's something different about this guy. He looks so light, so free. And then he told me what happened. Just amazing. It's amazing to be free from the spirit of rejection. Amazing to be free from the spirit of fear. Another spirit is the spirit of heaviness. You have not, it said you have received the garment of praise in place of the spirit of heaviness. That's why we always enjoy praise and worship. It displaces heaviness. The joy of the Lord is your that's where strength comes from. So when, when we're unhappy and, and when we're below par and a bit depressed and all that, it robs us of our strength. So we take authority. David spoke to his soul, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So he was speaking to himself. And you can speak to yourself but probably not in public. <laughs> because, um, <clears throat> you know, for obvious reasons, but uh, 
you, you can speak to yourself and you can speak to the demons. Again, probably not the right place out loud at work. <laughs> Although Jesus spoke to Peter out loud, didn't he? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Boom. So he did speak to somebody publicly, um, but that was a one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, we praise God. Anyway, <laughs> so this whole thing about um, identity and image and character and likeness, tracing back, the, 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 the dictionary says, to the original source, stamp or impress. So you've got to be able to identify with the right things. You trace yourself back to your own roots. You trace yourself back to your own father, your heavenly father. You trace yourself back to the family of God. Otherwise, what you're going to identify? You identify with the past failures. You identify with what people say about you, what they think about you. Everybody's got an opinion about everything, don't they? Go on Facebook and you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God, a lot of good interaction on Facebook. But you know, the thing is that you've got to be identifying yourself with your position in Christ. How many seated you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? So he's your saviour and he's, you identify with him now. And then when you identify with him, you don't take any rubbish. From, from people who just want to rubbish you or accuse you or put you down. You, you just don't take it. You stand tall. Amen? And you conduct yourself with authority. Hallelujah. Okay. Dealing with strongholds. You're um, addressing strongholds in your own life. You speak to yourself. Um, what other strongholds do you think might operate as you're growing in Christ? Children. <laughs> Children. <laughs> hey, Bill, that's not your strong old Bill. <laughs> that's, that's one of your blessings. <laughs> Praise God. Is it blessings? Uh, amen. Well, yes, you do have to take authority over children for their protection. So we, we just have a look at that because... Um, Authority to rule releases heaven on earth and releases provision. Amen. They said about Jesus, never a man spoke like this man. They say he doesn't speak like the scribes and Pharisees. He speaks as one with authority. Amen. And so authority to influence, authority to heal. You can heal with your words or you can wound with your words. Authority to bless. Okay, we want, I want to go to 2 Corinthians 4, and I want to look at verse 4. This is um, one of the thrusts. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Praise God. If you can find 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it says this. He said, um, but even if the gospel is, is vowed, it is vowed to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. We who, who do not believe, but the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves as his bond servants for Jesus. Now, when it comes to um, a time in your life, if you're a believer, there was a time when you were blind. There was a time I was blind. doesn't matter whether people spoke to me or not. I didn't understand what they were saying. Have you been in that situation? So people are talking to you about the Lord, but you don't understand even though you're trying to understand, you're trying to get your head around what they're saying, then one day, you understood. The light came on. Amen? And you understood. Now, this process of revelation knowledge continues 
even up till today. The difference between people who are wise and people who use authority correctly is that they have revelation. They have understanding. And the ones who don't embrace it and use it is because they do not yet have understanding. Amen. Okay, we'll have a look at that in a moment. But uh, where it comes to now the way we pray for the lost. If the God of this world has blinded their minds, then what should we do about it? What should we do about it, Albert? Okay, we're asking God to open their eyes, but you know, I'm um, going to potentially look at the mountains. Amen. He says, if anyone speaks to the mountain and commands it to be removed, Mark 11, 22, and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says will happen, he shall have whatever he says. I think it's the incorrect theology to ask God to move the mountains. Because he's commissioned us. He said, you command the mountains. Now, what about blindness of a non-believer? I want you to do something. I want you to set a goal. You've got to give your mind an instruction. You've got to give your mind a goal for your mind to start operating in a certain direction. I want you to give your mind an instruction. The instruction you give your mind is this. We're going to see one person come to Christ this year. Through my ministry, through my life, I'm going to see at least one person come to Christ this year. Then, start commanding the blindness to leave that person. It's demonic. I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Did you pray this year and command the blindness to leave an unbeliever? Think about your family members who are not yet saved. Amen? And you've got the authority to do something about it. I wish I knew and understood that earlier. I prayed for my dad. I believed for his salvation. He got saved after 20 years. But I realize now he could have been saved much quicker. He just didn't understand. He came and listened to me preach and all that. He didn't, he didn't understand. But he understood one day when a slip of a schoolgirl gave him a track on the street. And his eyes were opened. All of a sudden he saw it. Amen? Revelation. So you're actually saying now, in the name of Jesus, you spirit of blindness that's blinding this person, I command you to leave. What will happen when you do that? Hello? Talk to me. What will happen? Dan said, it will leave. It will leave. It will, it will leave. It will leave. It will leave. I mean, it will go. And all of a sudden, when you've been talking to somebody and they blank you and, and, and they don't understand a word what you're saying, all of a sudden they begin to understand something, what you're doing, what you're saying. All of a sudden they begin to see something about you if they didn't already see that they like. Amen. Amen. I want you to, I want you to give your mind an instruction. I want you to give your mind a goal. And I want you to fix, if you like, on one person. And I want you to start praying for that one person. And I want you to start taking authority over the spirit of blindness that's blinding their mind. And release the lights of the glorious gospel. You want to try that? You want to have a go? Okay, so... Got any strongholds you're going to work on this week? Anybody got any strongholds of rejection? I felt when I was praying, there's actually some strongholds in some people, they don't know who they are. They don't know their identity. They don't know who they are. So in one sense, you've got to take authority and you've got to command everything. When, when the demons said to Jesus, if, if, the badge of doubt, if you are the Son of God. 
command these stones to be turned to bread. If, so even Jesus was challenged on his status, on his manhood, on his divinity, if you are the son of God. That Satan knew he was the son of God. But he said, if you are, it's sowing doubt in his mind. You've got status, you, you've got position. You might not have performance yet. But if your performance, if you draw the conclusion, well, my performance is not matching up to my position, therefore I haven't got the permission, the, the position really. Do you see how it works? You recognize you've got the position, you recognize you've got the status, you recognize your identity, and then you can actually change your performance if it needs changing. Amen. You, you can take authority because the Bible says that we can take the next area of authority we take is over ourselves. <laughs> you know, you and I sometimes we're the biggest problem because uh, we've got certain traits, certain character weaknesses, certain, certain things we do. And um, we all like to change them, I think, most of us at least. That's why we make New Year resolutions and all that kind of stuff. But imagine speaking to yourself and commanding the change. Imagine speaking to that character weakness and commanding it to come into order. Imagine speaking if you've got wounds and commanding yourself to be healed. And why do you see the demons attacking you all the time, sitting on your head when they're under your feet? You've got to have the right way of seeing these things. Amen. So you're actually using your God-given authority to pray for the lost and to deal with demonic powers. Hallelujah. I like that. I like that. When I've actually done that, and I, and I, and I used to have all these uh, young weight lifters coming to talk to me in the gym. And uh, I don't know why they come to an, old, an, old, uh, an older person in, like that, but they did, and God, God saved her. And then I, I start speaking. I start speaking. When I'm in the jacuzzi, I start speaking into the gym, and I start releasing heaven, and I start releasing healing, and I start releasing blessing. That's all you can do. With your authority, that's what you're called to do. Amen? You know how dark some of the places are where you work. You know how difficult it is in the economic downturn. So you actually have to do some commanding. Amen? Command computers. I've got a computer engineer friend. He did everything he could to get this particular computer working. Couldn't crack it, couldn't figure it out. So in the end, he commanded it to work. And it worked. <laughs> Hallelujah. I watched um, Alison in the office. When things are not going right, she'll go upstairs and she'll do a little bit of um, shouting, a little bit of commanding, a little bit of uh, do spiritual warfare, take authority over the enemy and come down and things work. It's all right. It's all right. Sure, you just still do that work. Absolutely. Sometimes you've got to take authority over your boss, haven't you? Make him sweet or her. Give him a sweetener. Give him a taste of heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, we're going into Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Therefore I also, um, chapter 1 verse 19. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, did not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So this prayer, this Pauline, Pauline prayer, He's praying, Lord, he's praying that uh, God will give the Ephesian church a spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation so that they will know Christ. They already knew Christ. 
but he's now releasing this spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they know him deeper, that they know him better. You ever try praying that way for your children? You try praying that way for your, for your family members. You, you pray that way for your church. It's all to do with understanding. Just take the breakthroughs that you've had in your life. Take the growth spurts as a Christian you've had in your life. You take the things that have worked in your life and it's all to do with understanding. It's all to do with having the knowledge and the wisdom how to use the knowledge at the right time, in the right way, in the right place. Amen? And it connects you. So God is connected with the Ephesians church already now. Paul is saying, okay, let this go deeper now. More wisdom, understanding, so that you might know him better. Don't you want to know him better? Isn't that one of your goals? You give your mind an instruction this year, 2013. One of the instructions is, David, you're going to know him better. So I pray this prayer, not daily, I did at one point in my life, but I pray this prayer very, very often. I pray it for you, I pray it for myself, I pray it for my family. <clears throat> Lord, give to them a spirit of wisdom and revelation that they may know you better. So that means every one of you are progressively getting to know him better, every one of us, because of these kind of prayers, very powerful prayers. And then it says that uh, you may know, um, there's other things here, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. All right, anybody doesn't know the, ho doesn't know the hope of the, his calling for their lives? You don't know what he wants you to do with your life? This is your prayer. This is what you start praying. Lord, give me a spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation, so I can know the hope to which you have called me to. Amen? Amen. Don't despair because you're not yet knowing. It's all a question of wisdom. It's all a question of understanding. It's a question of something dawning on you, and all of a sudden you go, ah, oh, I see it now. I see it now. And there it says, um, and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? So there's two factors here. One is the inheritance of Christ, which is us. And then there's the inheritance he's given to us. And we know he's been given the inheritance of the nations. And one day he will come back to Jerusalem and he will rule from Jerusalem and he will rule the earth. In the, in the thousand years millennial rule. Amen? Many, many people believe it's not far away. Some believe it could happen in our lifetime. Well, praise God. And so the, the inheritance in the saints, that, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all, principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Amen. Praise God. So, praying for this spirit of wisdom and revelation when you don't actually understand something. Amen? Amen? You may not understand if you've got a chronic illness in your body and you've tried many, many things to get better and then we go to see doctor, you know, we go on medication and maybe some of us in the past have had surgery and that kind of thing. But there's a lot of diseases which are not curable. You know, you can actually um, deal with asthmatic condition, you can subdue it by drugs and so on and so forth, but to cure it, 
Medically, I don't think there's a cure. There's not a cure for asthma. There's, there's not a cure for lots and lots of things. Thank God there are helpful things to, you know, to help us to live, etc. But what about beginning to pray for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, so that you can know the power of the resurrection, that you can actually have the handles, the keys to get healed. Amen? To get healed. To be whole. Do you know God wants us whole? God wants us healed. God wants us fruitful. God does not want us to live lives of rejection. He does not want us to live lives where we're fearful all the time. He doesn't want you to be apologizing all the time for who you are. You're a child of God. Why would you apologize for who you are? Some people, they just live a life of apology. They just keep saying, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm sorry uh, for taking your time. I know you're a very busy person, and I'm really sorry to be here, but I just had to have a quick word with you because... Now you, come, you come as a child of God. You come with a dignity. You come with that authority. You don't have to sit at the other side of my desk or anybody else's desk shaking because of who you are. You just talk to me or you talk to anybody because you're actually the one in authority. You've got more authority than Cameron. He just lost, he just lost it. <laughs> he's, he, has, he's, he has a God-given authority. Otherwise he couldn't do those kind of things he's doing. But the actual... I'm not saying he does all bad either. But the fact is that as a believer, you have more authority than a non-believer. So why would we be afraid of anybody? When I'm rubbing shoulders with Damien Green, the, our, our MP, I've got to be unafraid. I've got to prophesy to him. I've got to speak into his life. And he actually thanked me for it, and it actually came to pass. So the thing is, when you're with people, you can actually, because of who you are, you can, you, you can look anybody in the eyes. You can talk to anybody. You can be bold with anybody. You can use your authority with anybody. Amen? It's not a question. It's not a question, listen... It's not a question of colour. It's not a question of your background. Otherwise, the orphan, Esther, would have never come into this role as a queen and ruled with longevity as a teenage girl. She was given that position by God. She was given favour by God. You are given a position by God. You are given favour by God now let's just, just recap and we're going to pray. Number one, inside your being, way deep down in here, when you're alone at home, when you go to bed, I went off to Kenya. I just, I, you know, I've been back a week now, but I was by myself. Normally I travel with my wife. I was by myself. I'm in the hotel room by myself. And all of a sudden, I start getting attacked, you know, with deli belly and all that kind of stuff. And I'd be going, oh, man, I, I wasn't feeling so grand. Right there and then, I can either begin to feel sorry for myself. I can begin to actually succumb to all of that. I can, you know, I'm on my own now. Who I am is going to shine and show if I don't have that intrinsic value of myself inside, when I'm alone in Africa, in Kenya, I'm going to struggle. There are some demons out there, you know. When I, when I was doing, you go, I'm, I'm doing TV work, for t t which has an audience of 10 million people. And I did know an attack. 
So what do you do? You start speaking to it <coughs> out of who you are inside. Just say to your, the person next to you, say, I have already been given authority Deep in my being, in my being. I, know I know who I am. Who I am. My, identity my identity is with Christ. Is with Christ. And, in him, and in him, I am totally accepted, am totally, accepted. Totally, loved, totally loved, and totally fruitful. And totally fruitful. I, believe I believe greater is he, greater is he. who's in me than Satan, Satan in the world. In the world. This, is this is a good day. I take authority, I take authority. Over, my day. over my day. I decree blessing. I decree, I decree and release health decree into, my into my family. I release blessing, I release blessing. into my finances. Into my finances. And, I and I command demons, demons. of sickness of disease, of, disease. Of, poverty, of poverty, of debt, of debt. to leave Please. in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Good. That's good. Praise God. That's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's identify. You'd like to stand with me? Let's identify, if we can, any strongholds. I talked about strongholds of fear and uh, talked about um, strongholds where people feel rejected and there are many, many other things that could be a stronghold in your life. Now is the time to start addressing them and speaking to them. Amen. Okay, can you take a moment and shut yourself in with God for a moment? And those who are watching on live streaming, if you could start to ask God, what are the strongholds that are preventing me moving forward? What's the mountains of obstacles, hindrances that are preventing me from moving forward? I sense really there's, there's quite a few people held back by lack of finances. And you've got to start speaking to that. God's a generous father. He loves to give treats to his children. He loves to give blessings to his children. It's only the devil who withhold finances from you. Do you think all the things in the earth, what God's put in the earth are for the devil's children? I don't think so. I think God put them there for his children. Amen. Okay, any fears in your life, any things like that? Would you just start speaking to them, please? Just start addressing. Just speak out loud to anything that you want to move out of the way. A bit quiet. <laughs> Those who watch you on live stream, you start speaking to strongholds. Hallelujah. The weapons of a warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And it's bringing every thought into captivity. Okay, I'll help you. Amen. Come on then. I bring every thought. Say with me, I bring every thought into captivity to the Lord Jesus Christ. I command imaginations, arguments, things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. I command them to come into order. I command them to leave my life. I command every stronghold broken, removed in the name of Jesus. I call myself free, delivered, happy and healthy. Now just take a moment and just think now as the Spirit of God just ministers to you. There's an anointing this morning here for identity. 
And I command right now that every person listening to this live streaming and the subsequent um, people who tap in in the, in, in the other weeks that, to come, and I command in the people in this room, that every person in this room will know their identity by revelation. I ask for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation to come upon you that you will know who you are in Christ. That you will know who Christ is better than ever before. And that you yourself will have the light turned on in your mind, in your heart. And you will see and know that you know that you know who you are. I release that blessing to you now. Those who had lost that sense of identity, that sense of destiny, I destroy that stronghold and I command you to be removed from the people of God in Jesus' name. I release you into your destiny. I release you in Jesus' name into your true identity. I destroy every spirit of fear. Offer the people of God in this place and offer the people of God are watching this live stream. I destroy every spirit of fear. And I command you to be removed. You're a spirit. We have not received you. We have not received the spirit of fear, but we have received the Holy Spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. In the past tense, we have received it. And in Jesus' name, we destroy fear. We rebuke it and command it to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Reassure your people, Father. Reassure your sons and your daughters and bring them into the full stature in Christ that we might truly be the gateway for the world to see heaven established on earth through us in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. Hey, Jay, hello. Hello. You're better. You look better. Praise God. Excellent. Uh, she wasn't well last week, so good to see you up and about. Praise God. Mums can't stay down too long, can they? Not allowed because the children. <laughs> we're going to do. Um, we're going to have some praise and worship. Let's let's just rejoice about who we are. Amen. Praise God. Praise God, if we can have everybody up, that'd be great. Okay, just before we go... In